Hello. <clears throat> Looking at a uh, quite a stack here. This is just a um, a random part of the movie soundtrack collection I have. So I've talked about that a few times in previous videos. You might have watched or not. That um, <clears throat> I pick up quite a few movie soundtracks that I find secondhand around secondhand stores, particularly movies from the decade of the 1990s <coughs> so I just grabbed a, a stack off the top and thought I'd go through some and just show a bit of what I have or don't have and um, maybe talk about some of them so let's go Philadelphia so Philadelphia was that Tom Hanks movie Tom Hanks Denzel Washington from 93 and so we've got um, the most well-known song from it is the Bruce Springsteen one, Streets of Philadelphia. But we also see we got uh, Peter Gabriel, Sade, Spin Doctors, Maria Callas, Neil Young. That's a pretty good soundtrack, I think. There's, um, you know, soundtracks, I've talked about this before as well, that they fall into two categories where it's either... Uh, a selection of songs performed by artists that are connected to the movie in some way often not connected to the movie in any way but just put on the soundtrack anyway sometimes they're featured in the movie other times it's the score or the kind of the orchestral music from the movie this one obviously is the former pump up the volume might have seen that it's christian slater this would have been from what 92 or so, 1990. Um, I saw this movie years ago. Well, I probably when I was still at primary school, or what Americans call elementary school. So I must have been like 10 years old when I saw this. Probably a little bit. Um, no, I would have been older. If it was 1990, I would have been older than 10. I mean, I would have been younger than 10. Maybe I wasn't. Okay. Whatever it was, I was definitely at school. It probably was past elementary school early early years of um intermediate or high school um if it's the movie i think it is it's the one where christian slater is running a pirate radio station as i can't remember the name of his dj character i think it's yeah, i may actually be completely wrong what have we got on here we've got concrete blondie sorry concrete blonde ivan neville liquid jesus the pixies Peter Murphy. Peter Murphy is the guy from, um, is it Bauhaus? Yes. I think it's the singer from Bauhaus. Bad Brains in, with Henry Rowland doing a cover of Kick Out the Jams, MC5 song. Uh, Sound Gun, that's some pretty good stuff on this, eh? Sound Gun, Sonic Youth, Cowboy Junkies. So the Sound Gun song is Heretic. So from 1990, it's um, quite an interesting selection of, movie, for, of music for them to put on a, a, a 1990s soundtrack because this is before Alternative really blew up, 1990. It's pre-Nevermind, pre-Bad <coughs> pre Motorfinger, pre-all those big um, 1991 grunge Alternative Rock albums. So they've got, you know, <coughs> the Pixies, Soundgarden, Sonic Youth, Henry Rollins, it's kind of a, um, kind of a, uh, what would you call it? A bit of a risk for them to put that, those kinds of things on a soundtrack. The Hunt for Red October. Now this, I will assume, yes, <clears throat> I've listened to this for a long time. This is music from the original motion, sound, motion picture soundtrack composed and conducted by Basil Polydorus. I think Hunt for Red October was the late 80s, maybe, or 1990, same year as Pump Up the Volume. So this is the score, you know, this is the, the, um, the music played in the background of key scenes, or not so key scenes, when um, <clears throat> Sean Connery is, uh, <coughs> plays a Russian submarine captain. Is he an admiral? I think he's just a captain. 
but he does even try and put a Russian accent on, which I guess, you know, I think everyone else does though. I think the reason why I remember that is because it kind of stands out. I think all the other actors do put on Russian accents, but he's just got the, the old Sean Connery one. This is one that I'm sure everyone knows, and this is, you see this around a lot in secondhand stores because Forrest Gump was a huge movie and the soundtrack was particularly popular with, I guess, what we call boomers. I remember my, my cousin's parents and my uncle and aunt, they bought this when the movie came out. And so what have we got on here? It's a two, two CD, that's, which is quite unusual for a soundtrack to be double disc. But it's if you've seen the movie, which I'm sure you have, it kind of goes through post-war American history running parallel with uh, Forrest Gump's life. And so it's kind of, you know, late 50s, kind of the birth of rock and roll through the 60s, a bit of the 70s. So we've got Elvis, Dwayne Eddy, uh, <clears throat> Wilson Pickett. Then we get into kind of more uh, 60s. So we've got CCR, Joan Baez, Baez, Aretha Franklin, Bob Dylan, The Beach Boys, Mamas and Papas, The Doors, Simon and Garfunkel, Jefferson Airplane, The Supremes, Leonard Skinner. Willie Nelson, and so some of these are or were played specifically um, in scenes of the movie. I'm trying to, as I'm saying this, I'm trying to think of when I heard the songs. Well, Hound Dog is the is the easy one because <clears throat> there's that scene where he's watching Elvis on TV performing. I think he's performing Hound Dog. Um, <coughs> I think I remember a scene where uh, Freebird by G uh, Leonard Skinner's playing, where um, the girl, Jenny, is going to commit suicide. She doesn't. But it says here, the Leonard Skinner song, they've got a sweet home, Alabama, which I guess connects because their, you know, Forrest is from Alabama. And another very famous um, soundtrack, which is upside down for some reason, is the train spotting soundtrack. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if was train spotting big in America. I don't know, but it was pretty big in Britain <clears throat> and Australia and New Zealand, and so was this soundtrack. This this soundtrack holds uh, certain records, I think, for like one of the highest selling soundtracks. <coughs> um, <coughs> Jesus, this cough is getting really annoying now. Hey, it's been. What, it's going to be three weeks soon, so but it's, it's hanging around. Um, so we've got here, um, what do we got? Uh, Lust for Life, so that's probably the most famous one from the movie where they're running down the road after, I think, trying to steal something from a shop. Getting chased by the police. Brian Eno, Primal Scream, New Order, Iggy Pop again, Blur. Lou Reed, Perfect Day, which is also very famous in the scene where he um, he's ODing on heroin. Um and he kind of, you know, he falls into the cut, well not falls, but kind of feels like he's falling through the floor and is, gets dumped outside for the ambulance to come and pick him up. Born Slippy is the scene in the nightclub. Um, what's the one where he's swimming in the toilet? I think that actually might be Brian Eno track, Deep Blue Day, where he's he drops some pills in the toilet and then he's imagining that he dives into the toilet and swimming, but he's actually just putting his hand in this disgusting pub toilet. Um, it's a great movie. Soundtrack's pretty good as well, but uh, if you haven't seen Train Spotting, which I'm sure most people have, I thoroughly recommend it. I haven't watched the the more recent one they did, uh, like an updated one, which doesn't really appeal to me. Um, <clears throat> the Tron Legacy soundtrack by Daft Punk. Now this is a great soundtrack. If you like Daft Punk or the Tron Legacy movie, or that kind of, um, how would you describe it? It's, it actually, <clears throat> I guess, you know, you hear a lot of, we, there's all those different waves, like synth wave, and, you know, if, if you know what synth wave is, and kind of, it takes modern electronic music, but also heavily 
borrows from, I guess, nostalgia 80s electronic as well, kind of uh, 80s video game music as well, uh, and blends it all together. This soundtrack has elements of that, but it also has some orchestration, like as in, you know, violins and, and whatnot, and so it's not just electronic music. <clears throat> it's got some it's got some really great songs S son of flynn um what's the other one the one when they walk into the nightclub i think it's end of the line or d res no no it's not d res maybe it's end of the line there's a there's a scene where they walk into his nightclub and daft punk are actually in the movie the the dj's in the the tron nightclub then there's the um tron legacy in titles and finale which is the same, <clears throat> I don't know what you call it, motifs, uh, basic tune, but one is done electronically and one's done with the orchestra. It is a, a brilliant, brilliant soundtrack. Again, I highly, highly, highly recommend this. One of my favorite recent, or you know, relatively recent, it's 2010, it's 13 years old now, feels relatively recent. <clears throat> Top Gun. What's this? 87, I think, Top Gun. Uh, looking for the year. It's in there somewhere. But I, oh, there, 86. Okay, a little bit earlier than I thought. Um, so, the track listing is on the back. <clears throat> Highway to the Danger Zone is probably, of course, the one that most people know. But also got T Take My Breath Away by Berlin. Um, Hot Summer Nights by Miami Sound Machine. Uh, and like I said, Danger Zone, Kenny Loggins. <coughs> um, just some pretty good 80s songs on there. It's a pretty solid classic soundtrack, that one. Sideways. This is not from the 90s or the 80s. This is more recent as well. The Sideways would have been at 2007? 2004. <clears throat> That's basically a bunch of uh, jazz from what I remember. I've, I've only listened through to this once. I really like the movie Sideways. That's why I got the soundtrack. Music composed by Rolf Kent. From my memory, it's just basically jazz. Not bad. Not particularly uh, memorable either, but um, maybe you know I could give it another listen. I might be able to offer more on it. The Mask of Zorro. This is that one with Anthony, Antonio Banderas and uh, Catherine Zeta Jones, which would have been about ninety-nine from memory, ninety-eight. And this is um, the score, orchestral score. Against All Odds. Now, I've never seen this movie. Um, this would have been a late 80s, 84, okay, mid 80s. Rachel Ward and Jeff Bridges. I think they're on an island from the looks of it, but no, actually, this looks like kind of the ruins in some like Aztec temple, so I don't know. Um, the music on this looks like it's 80s kind of radio music AOR we got Phil Collins against all odds Stevie Nicks Peter Gabriel Big Country Mike Rutherford he's the um, guy from um, Genesis uh, Larry Carlton now Larry Carlton what was I did a video a couple of weeks ago where Larry Carlton was on it I said I remembered I his name was familiar who was it he played on something anyway he features on this quite a lot. The, the second half all features Larry Carlton. Um, <clears throat> Sleepers and Seattle. This is one of the most common soundtracks to see in secondhand shops. You see this. If I went to 10 secondhand shops randomly tomorrow, I would say you could make a pretty decent bet say if you gave me odds i don't know whatever your good betting odds that if if i could find it in two out of those 10 which probably doesn't sound that what a lot but 
it is because you know movie soundtracks are not that common and i don't know was this that a huge of a movie like i remember it was popular and kind of big in the mid 90s was it 93 it says but i don't remember it being absolutely huge but just it's the soundtrack is everywhere we got we got jimmy durante louis armstrong nat king cole Carly Simon, Gene Autry, a bit of a mix on this. Joe Cocker, Harry Connick Jr., Celine Dion. Not really the kind of thing I'd usually listen to. But like I said, I if something's from the 90s, a soundtrack, I'll pick it up. You can see I have things from outside of the 90s, but particularly from that that decade, I, I'm I at one time had a had a, a quest to kind of get as many 90s movie soundtracks as possible i'm not really as into that anymore as i was but i still kind of do pick up things if i um if i can this is <coughs> the year of living dangerously never seen this movie uh music by maurice or morris jar this is from 83 mel gibson and sigourney weaver Two pretty big... Actually, I remember listening to this. This is actually a pretty good soundtrack from my memory. <coughs> I have memories. These songs ring a bell. Wayang Kuli. Dajakata. Dick Tracy. Now, I loved Dick Tracy when I was a kid. But, not... not for any particular reason i just liked it like the design of it and the toys i actually when i saw the movie i actually was bored to tears because i was like nine or something when the movie came out and so it wasn't really a kid's movie it was probably above my level and so <clears throat> i was kind of disappointed but i remember the, the toys and the, the game at mcdonald's it was like this dick tracy game at mcdonald's like you collected the cards or something like that or anyway this um I actually recent, listened to this recently. This has kind of got yeah bit, bits and pieces all over the place of this. It's got Katie Lang, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, <coughs> Brenda Lee, Dick Tracy performed by Ice T. That sure fits. Um, does Madonna have? I'm pretty sure Madonna had a song on this, didn't she? I'm sure Madonna had a song on this because you know she's in the movie. Um, Erasure, Jerry Lee Lewis again. Not a particularly cohesive uh, soundtrack, if you ask me. Um, kind of uh, Footloose. This is from the '80s as well. This is '84. Footloose is, of course, the the song that everyone knows. Who did Footloose? Who performed Footloose? Was that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, Kenny Loggins. King of the King of the um, soundtracks in the eighties. Two huge soundtracks that he's part of. Now, another movie I've never seen before. Uh, <clears throat> this is interesting because I don't actually know what this is. This, uh, well, actually, I do know what it is, but I mean, I've never seen it. And I don't know how I you would ever be able to see it, especially nowadays. This is the soundtrack for an IMAX film. Now, I'm sure everyone knows everyone knows what IMAX is. IMAX is that particularly large cinema screen and i think it's it's curved sometimes as well but it's like you know if you want to experience a, a movie in the best way they recommend imax is the best way to do that and they when it first or at least in new zealand when it was first introduced the imax cinema there's one we have one in our city whereas i'm sure that seems like nothing most countries probably have hundreds of but it, we only have one and when it was first introduced they seem to only have movies specifically made for IMAX and they tended to be kind of documentary half child type movies. I remember I saw a dinosaur one, a dinosaur movie. It was only like 45 minutes long, but it was like, wow, you're experiencing this in IMAX, but the movie was just a pile of shit. It wasn't even a movie really. Anyway, this is one they made called The Living Sea, soundtrack for the IMAX film. So specifically, it's an IMAX film. And this was uh, featuring the music of Sting. The old stinger. So this is from 95. And yeah, 
So you can see Fragile, that's, I, I know that song, but most of it he specifically wrote for this because you can see um, a lot of the songs have got uh, <coughs> oceanic um, type names, Jellyfish Lake, Tides, The Seventh Wave, Ocean Waltz, Cool Breeze. And I remember listening to it. I think it's, this is not bad. If you like Sting, I think it's okay. Jeez, I've already spoken for 20 minutes. Holy shit. Uh, I'll try and just... The Mask. It's a great 90s movie. Not a great soundtrack, if I'm honest. There's one song on this that I heard it, and I had not heard it for years. I hadn't heard it for like 20-something years, but the song was uh, by Harry Connick Jr. I Could Only Whisper Your Name. I, that must have been used to be played on the radio or something in the 90s or I don't know where I'd heard it but it was like when I heard it it was like instantly I was like oh my god this song not like it's a great song or anything but just it was buried somewhere deep in my brain and I honestly had not heard it for decades and as soon as I heard it I was like I, you know I'm, I can't believe I even heard this song for so long uh, we've got Fishbone Vanessa Williams, Harry, oh, I already said, Tony, 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 remember them? Jim Carrey, I don't know what he's, does he sing those songs? I can't actually remember. Uh, uh, Twin Peaks, music from Twin Peaks, music composed by Angelo Badalamenti. He died recently, didn't he? You think he died last year? This is all the the instrumental tracks with well, there's some vocals on it as well from um from the tv series you know of course the the main theme twin peaks theme um laura palmer's theme um, if you heard that you'd know it as well uh it's pretty if you like twin peaks it's good it's kind of got that weird lynching fe feeling like you get in the tv show and, and from his movies that uh, the music kind of puts that across as well I guess that's why, you know, David Lynch doesn't choose things accidentally or just go, oh, he can do the music. Everything is painstakingly gone over and decided and agreed upon. And so obviously he felt that this guy, uh, Angelo Badalamente, <coughs> could uh, produce, conjure up the music ne necessary to, to match the, um, the Twin Peaks atmosphere and story. The Crow, brilliant soundtrack. What's this, 94, I think? Can't actually see, it would have been around 94. Um, so we got The Cure, the, uh, the Cure Burn, that's a great song. Big Empty, Stone Hill Pilots, Dead Soul, so they do that um, Joy Division cover, Nine Inch Nails, <coughs> Rage of the Machine, Darkness, Violent Femmes, Helmet, Pantera. Great songs and great bands on that. That's a, a, a very good soundtrack. Uh, <coughs> I'm running out of time here. I'll show, I'll show one more. I've got, well, maybe it was a too big a uh, endeavor choosing that many to go over in such a short time. Okay, this is something that's quite good. The good, the bad, and the ugly. <coughs> so this is um, the <coughs> soundtrack, the Morricone soundtrack from Good, the Bad, and the Ugly movie um <coughs> all these you know if you've watched any of those movies even if you haven't watched those movies you still probably heard half these these songs especially the main theme the main title ecstasy of gold of course is also used a lot in different things most notably uh <coughs> metallica's entry uh you know intro music if you go see them live in concert they play that live before they walk on stage the trio is also quite a quite a well-known one in popular culture so this is a reissue from 85 obviously the original movies came out in the 60s the spaghetti westerns but this was um reissued so yeah just a a small part of the collection i didn't actually talk about these ones but that's almost 25 minutes so um i can't go longer than that it's a bit silly Anyway, uh, something a little bit different, rambling, looking at various things. Thanks for watching.